Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have three Christmas cards to share with you using some Hello Bluebird products as well as some of my favorite things products. They all seem like they are the same cards but depending on maybe what you have in your craft room uh, one will be able for you to create and the other might be a bit difficult. Um, but I'm hoping this way to show you that one design can um, really help you get tons of cards ready without having to do everything exactly the same. Now for the coloring I'm going to do the same thing, I will show it once. Um, for the background again I'm, I'm doing the same distress in combination. Uh, I'll show it once, no I will show it more but I will speed it up the two other times. Uh, but you will get the idea, it's just to show you how um, how um, a strong kind of design can really help you a long way. Another thing that I really wanted to shout out um, was uh, my inspiration for today's card. As I say, I always try to inspire you with the cards that I'm creating. Um, the lovely thing is that if we inspire each other, uh, giving a bit of gratitude to the, that person that inspired you. And in this case, my card or actually the color combination of the pinks that I will be using later on uh, was completely inspired by Nikki Meek or Nikki No Cards or Nikki New Cards, I don't know how to pronounce it uh, on Instagram. Um, she is incredible. She is one of the design team members from My Favorite Things, Hello Bluebird and probably some other design teams because she's incredible. Um, but I mostly follow her through those two uh, teams. Uh, she inspires me with every card that she creates. She's really talented. She makes these soft cards that always are so mind-blowing. They are elegant, simple, precious. I truly adore her style. Um, and there was this one card uh, that she created for uh, my favorite things. Um, I think it was a sketch challenge um, and it was truly mind-blowing. It was just perfect. And so um, something that you can always do when you are inspired by someone and you see a card on Instagram is to check whether they have a blog. And so I went to see on her blog um, whether she shared or not the combination of her pink um, Copic combination as well as her background. And she did. And so I couldn't be happier. Um, for the background, the only thing that is different is that she used oxides and I'm using these dressings because those are my favorite. Uh, but it worked out great as well. And then the copy combination actually was mind-blowing for me. So here I'm now starting on all of the accessories that will get a pink color. And I try to do it a bit simultaneously. I don't know whether she, she started with the grays or she ended with the grays. But she actually combined warm grays with pinks. Yes, I know, mind-blowing. Uh, it might be that you already know this trick, but I never thought of using grays this way. Um, I used it in the past with purples when I needed a really, really dark color or for blue because it's really close, but never to darken a pink. So this pink combination that you will see on my card is completely thanks to her. Um, also on my blog post there you can find all of my uh, combinations truly this is completely inspired by Nikki Meek she's incredible and again the distress ink combinations that I'm going to use later on was also completely inspired by her on my blog post I have a link towards the card that inspired me to create this one and in my mind while I'm doing the voiceover I also want to add it to my YouTube description box but I don't know whether I will recall doing that. So if it's not in my YouTube description box, you can remind me or you can check my blog post if you want to see the card that inspired me for today. Um, but it's definitely already prepped on my blog post. So there you will find it. Um, I also stamped out the bird and the snowflake. I didn't use it any at the end. Um, but you can definitely. Um, there is also, I contemplated about creating a fourth card being a shaker card, but I didn't end up doing that just to limit myself in time. This video already is 18 minutes and more. Um, so just, I thought, let's limit the things, you know. 
So the coloring is done, I'm going to use the matching dies to cut all of these images out and then we will play with placement. As I said, in this particular moment I didn't know yet how I was going to place everything. It sort of looks like the normal thing what I did because they are facing towards each other this way. But once I was happy with this layout I could start on my backgrounds. Now for my backgrounds I will make three cards as I mentioned. One will be with my favorite stencil. This one is from my favorite things and is called the watercolor wash stencil. Now this is going to be my, my one layer background. Um, so this was actually my tryout to see whether the combination from the Kimik also worked uh, with the stress inks. And of course it did just consider that it might take a bit more time and just more of a build up in the layers because they are less forgiving than the stress oxide inks. On the other hand, if you have a particular paper like Stratmore Bristol Smooth, it's quite forgiving because it rests on there a bit longer, well, it stays wet a bit longer on there. But in my case, I'm using the same as my coloring paper. So this is Transit High Perfect coloring paper and I'm already used to doing ink blending on this one. So I just went for it. Here I started with my lightest color and I just added more and more. The lovely thing about this is that um, your paper also get more saturated and so it will be easier to move those colors around. Um, and I must admit the moment that I added black suit to the pink, I was terrified. Um, I, I used it with blue again, already with purple as well. It's the same as with the gray markers uh, for combinations in the past. I never use it with pink, it was such a big gap, but it actually works. So once I had my background and since I'm going to make some Christmas cards, I decided to add some white splatters that will represent snow. They can also be stars depending on what you're going for, but in my case it was to represent snow, but you, you make it whatever you want to make it. Um, so I'm just splattering it all around and then I am going to take some more elements to create backgrounds with. Another thing, if you don't have this stencil, you might have this watercolor wash freeform. And that's actually a really good one because even if you don't have the stencil and you just have this die, you can create your own stencil. And that's great. Uh, but I think the stencil was first and then the die came out and well, I just have this thing of wanting to have everything. And definitely with shapes like this, this it's just great. So originally I didn't want to create this, this specific background because I wanted to create the one layer and then a shaker. And if you create a shaker and you put the acetate and your acetate can handle heat, then you can white heat emboss the snowflakes from the stem set on top of the acetate. That was my idea first. But then I thought, well, lean shaker cars, it's not really something that I make a lot um, they often fail as well for me and I have a hard time with getting pictures from them. So just to make it a bit easier, I think I decided to not do that. But I die cut the watercolor wash freeform die out of an A2 size panel, which gave me that die cut as well as the panel uh, with the shape cut out from. So here I just have a piece of paper that is fit to go behind that, that um, window and I will just create my background this way. So again, doing exactly the same. That's why I sped it up quite a bit, um, making sure to go back and forward in between the colors definitely once I added that black, because again, it's quite heavy, you know, uh, but it worked out as well. So again, if by any chance, Nikki, you're watching. I'm a big fan, huge fan. Uh, thank you for the inspiration because you're a genius. Um, also here, I wanted to keep the ink blending in because as you can see, I smudged uh, a bit with my paintbrush. I was a bit too heavy with the ticking on the paintbrush for my flicks. So there was a bit of, um, well, a big blob on top of my paper. Uh, I'm going to fix that later on. Actually, I wanted to create exactly three the same cards, kind of. Um, but then since that happened, I just had to wiggle a tiny bit with the layout for my last card. Um, 
but it's almost exactly the same and so just keep that in mind if I wouldn't have flicked that hard or tapped too hard on my paintbrush then I would have had three times the same layout. Now to get that layout I decided to lay it out once. Um, I used the background that was the, the driest of all. Um, I wiggled a bit with all of the images then the sentiments and once I was happy I used the present seal to keep everything in place and to adhere it exactly how I wanted it to be. So I'm just wiggling that sentiment, the let it. I wanted it to be a bit wonky, a bit random. Random is really hard. Um, so it took me a bit, a bit of time and then once I was happy, take the present seal, press it down, rub it so that everything sticks and then we can lift it up all at once, add our adhesive in the back and then put it back in place where you want it to be. So I'm doing that here. And I'm peeling it off and I'm going to use some thin foam squares on top of the images and some liquid glue for the sentiment. I'm also making sure that I have some slivers of thin foam squares. That's why I cut it a bit smaller with my scissors and then I can go in those tiny areas so that I can really fill up all of the images. Now the cat there, I will not be removing the backings at the beginning because I really want to add everything first and then the overlapping part of the cat. I will use some liquid glue and I will add it um, in the second round uh, to my card. So let's peel everything off. And um, well, as I always say, I don't like to repeat myself or make the same cards, but actually this was a really fun process because the coloring of those other uh, images I actually did while sitting on the couch. So I was really relaxed. I was watching TV. Um, and then the backgrounds, well, it's I find it really therapeutic to do some ink blending. Um, so since it was every time another kind of panel, it was also a lot of fun. And you can definitely switch up the colors. It was just for this video to show you how easy it can be and how similar cards can be, but still be different. So here, just to keep that same layout, I decided to puzzle all of the elements on top of this one. Once they are in place, I can again take the present seal and lift it up again. I must, however, um, warn you um, while doing this, uh, my present seal, well, not all of the black from the sentiments, uh, mostly uh, was dry, so there was a bit of smudging on my present seal, so I made sure to not use exactly the same paper, because if the smudging was going to be on another area of my images, for example, then it might have smeared, uh, so therefore just check whether your present seal is still clean before reusing that part. So that is my second layout and then I just have a third one where I need to make sure that I am covering that white spot over there. Now I'm going to do that with the sentiment. So um, here the layout is quite simple so you can also lay it out yourself without doing exactly exactly the same. Um, but here with the snow I thought I could cover it up easily. So I just make sure that I like the layout. I also watched the other cards to base myself on that. And then I use present seal again. The kitten moved while adding the present seal with all my glamorous actions. Um, but that wasn't an issue because that was the last thing that I was going to add. So no big deal there. Now before adding the images, I'm first going to add this shape on top. My panel is now ready. You can also do this with some um, foam adhesive, which would be great. I just decided to not do that because it was easier this way to add the thin foam squares, the liquid glue, exactly the same as previously. While with the foam, you need to make sure that the overlapping things have more or less foam and such. Um, so that was just to to keep it as short as possible here and not use tons of different um, adhesives. Uh, but it would have been really lovely and maybe it would stand out more with some more adhesive. Well, with some dimension. 
that you know what I'm creating here so now this final piece of course I still needed to add it to a panel so I did add here some foam tape but again it would have been nice uh, on the second card as well to have that more that dimension on top um, oh well it works out um, so here I'm just making sure to cover the back as much as possible and then I will remove the backing and try to adhere this piece as centered as possible on that white panel. I also cut some really small slivers to put on the S to just reinforce it a tiny bit. Um, and then once the backings are removed I can add it. And then we can embellish a bit more. So for the embellishments, I used some stickles as well as glossy accents. And I think it would have been lovely to add some stars or those snowflakes from the stamp set itself. But that would have taken me a bit longer again. Um, you definitely can, but I just wanted to show you the strength of a design and how you can easily make several cards with it, even if you want to change uh, some of the elements. Um, so here I have my three basic panels. Let's add them to a card base. So I'm just using some adhesive roller for that. And then we can add all of the liquid kind of embellishing things. So the glossy accents I'm going to add to the buttons. Um, and then the stickles I will be adding to the heart. You can also add it to those other pink elements. Um, I added it to the heart as well as that those wide areas from the scarf and the mittens. Um, I thought it was a nice um, aspect, but you can add many more if you want to. That's all up to you, of course, how you want to uh, embellish your cards. But that will be it for my cards. So just some stickles and glossy accents. If you're adding your glossy accents and you're having trouble with uh, like those tiny bubbles or like air that is in it just first add it to the tip of your finger you can rub it up easily um, that way uh, you already have all the air out and then you can go onto your card for the stickles I think it's not really necessary you can go over it back and forth if needed um, but I just added it to those white areas as I said as on top of the hearts and those are my cards for today. Really simple, but I think, and definitely with the colors by Nikki Meek, uh, that these cards all have a lot of impact and they were truly a lot of fun to create. So I hope that today's video inspires you, that maybe you're in love with this color combination as well. Let me know down below. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch this video. Thank you to Nikki Meek for inspiring me with these color combinations for all of the pinks. I want to thank you all again for being here, for supporting me on my YouTube channel. I wish you all an incredible day and I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!